Today we will be praying Psalm 46. This psalm is incredibly beautiful, just like the other psalms, and we will be praying verse by verse. We will analyze, examine what each verse reveals to us, and based on that, we will offer a prayer inspired by Psalm 46. God is our refuge. Before we begin, I want to invite you to subscribe to the Activate Notifications channel. If you are already subscribed, please share this prayer with a friend, so they can also participate in this blessed prayer. May God bless your family, may God bless you in a special way. Psalm 46 is a psalm that deeply speaks to my heart, and God will speak powerfully to your heart through this mighty psalm. Psalm 46, verse 1, says that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In this verse, we can perceive that God reveals Himself to us as a refuge, a source of strength, and a readily available help in times of trouble. Anguish is a difficult moment that we all experience. Who hasn't gone through a moment of anguish, a moment of affliction? But this psalm comforts our hearts by showing us a God who, besides being a refuge, is also our strength and a present help in moments of anguish. I don't know how you came across this video. Perhaps you, who are listening to me, are feeling sad, downcast. Has a problem arisen in your life? But I want you to know that God is your refuge. God is your strength, He is your refuge because He guards you, He guards you because He loves you. He is your strength because He sustains you with power, grace, love, and kindness. He is your help. In moments of anguish, affliction, He comes to rescue us. That's how the people of Israel were in the midst of the desert. Before them was a vast sea, but God was a very present help in times of trouble. The sea opened up, and the people crossed on dry land. Know that your God is present in moments of affliction, in moments of anguish, in moments of scorn, in the difficult moments of life. God is a refuge and strength for your life, for your soul. And verse 2 tells us, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Therefore we will not fear, even if the circumstances of life, even if life's moments are difficult, chaotic, even if the world is in crisis, I will be in Christ. Even if the world is in calamity, I will be in the refuge and strength, guarded and protected by God. When the psalmist in verse 2 says, Therefore we will not fear. He is saying, Because God is my refuge and strength, I will not be afraid. In other words, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid because your God is a mighty God who guards you, defends you, and is a shield in your life. So he says in verse 2, Therefore we will not fear. I will not be afraid, I will not be afraid, because God is my refuge and strength. Every time fear knocks on the door of your heart, tell fear, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Do not be afraid, do not be afraid of adversities, problems, conflicts, giants, or walls. Do not be afraid, because the God who called you is faithful, and He guarantees your victory. He guarantees blessings in your home, in your family. The God you serve is a refuge and strength, a present help in times of anguish. And for this reason, the psalmist tells you, therefore we will not fear, even if the earth gives way. Just see the confidence of the psalmist. He is saying that even if the earth moves, even if the earth gives way, he will not fear, even if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea. In other words, 
even if an earthquake happens, I will not fear because my God is my refuge and strength. That's what the psalmist is saying in verse 2. And in verse 3, he goes even further, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains tremble with its tumult. In other words, even if everything around me is conflicting, even if everything around me seems difficult, complicated, problematic, even so, I will not fear. Even if the earth gives way, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains are cast into the midst of the sea, even so. I will continue to trust in God because I know that my Redeemer lives and will ultimately rise upon the earth. And the psalmist is teaching us that we need to trust in God. And how were Jesus' disciples in the midst of the storm? Jesus was sleeping in the boat. The storm was raging, and the disciples were fearful, they were afraid. Jesus wanted to teach his disciples that they didn't need to be afraid because the one in the boat was greater than the seas, greater than the winds, greater than everything. Jesus rises up and calms the sea and the wind. Jesus is rising up in your life today to calm the storm, to calm the contrary winds. For this reason and for this purpose, do not fear, do not be dismayed, and do not be afraid. Do as the psalmist did in Psalm 46, therefore we will not fear. Even if the earth gives way, and even if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains tremble with its tumult. In verse 4 of chapter 46, the psalmist goes even further. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Notice that in this verse 4, the psalmist tells you that there is a river, and this river whose streams make glad the city of God. Which river is the psalmist referring to in Psalm 46? It is the river of living water. It is the same river that Jesus spoke of to the Samaritan woman. In the Gospel of John, it is the same river described in the book of Revelation. It is the river that brings life, also described in the book of Ezekiel about this river. This is the river that brings joy. The waters of this river are the Holy Spirit. Water represents purity. Water represents purification. And the river that purifies is the river that transforms. It is the river that heals diseases. It is the river that cures sin, that washes our spiritual garments, and the waters of this river. It is the Holy Spirit of God that brings joy to the city, the dwelling place of the Most High. This river is now entering your house. This river of God, the purifying river, the transforming river, the healing river, the river that opens doors, the river that brings joy, the river that comforts our hearts. The Holy Spirit of God is entering your house, entering your life, and purifying your soul. And it is about this river that verse 4 is referring to. The river that represents the Holy Spirit of God, and this river, the streams of these waters, brings joy to the city of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit brings joy to our hearts. And in verse 5, it says even more, God is in her midst. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Notice that in verse 5 of Psalm 46, it says, God is in her midst. The text does not say that God is on the right side, the left side, in front, or behind. No. The text says that God is in the midst. What does it mean that God is in the midst? When you place something in the middle of a room, everything around it seems to fade away. When you put something in the middle, highlighted in the center of a room, 
everyone who enters can perceive what is in the middle. Have you noticed? Everything in the center is observed, everything in the center stands out. When the text says in verse 5 that God is in her midst, the psalmist is saying that God is in the center. God is the center of attention. God is in the midst. It means He is the most important thing in my life. God is the most important. That's why He is in the center, in the midst. Notice that when Jesus went to die on the cross, He died in the midst of two thieves. Even in His death, the middle, the center, belonged to Him. God is in the midst, in the center of your life. God is in the midst of your house. God is in the midst of your marriage, your work. When God is in the center of our lives, the Word of God tells us that God is in her midst. In other words, when God is in the center of our lives, highlighted in our lives, we will not be shaken, and God will help us when morning breaks. So allow God to be in the center of your life, and nothing will shake your faith, nothing will shake your hope in God, and the Lord will help you. When morning breaks, in other words, God will be ready to help you and come to your aid. And in verse 6, the psalmist declares, The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. When the psalmist says, The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts, we can see the power, the potency of God's voice. Notice that in this verse 6, the psalmist tells us that the Lord utters his voice and the earth melts. In other words, the voice of the Lord is so powerful that the earth melts. The voice of the Lord is so powerful that no stony heart can withstand the voice of God. The voice of the Lord is so powerful, and curses are broken, that all evil, everything that comes against your life, is undone. Why? Because the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is capable of melting the earth. Here the psalmist is trying to exalt. He wants to show us how powerful the voice of the Lord is. And this voice is saying to you today, Daughter, son, do not fear, for I am with you. I am your refuge and your strength. A present help in times of trouble. And in verse 7, the psalmist makes a very important declaration. He says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In this verse 7, the psalmist is saying, The Lord of hosts is with us. Hey! I'm telling you that the Lord of hosts is with you. Yes, I'm not saying that the President is with you, that the Governor is with you. That the Air Force, Navy, Army is with you. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the God who made the heavens and the earth is with you. The God who made the sea and the stars is with you. The one who is with you is greater. The one who is with you is greater than the sun, greater than the moon. The one who is with you is greater than the stars. The one who is with you is greater than the seas. The one who is with you is greater than the giants. Who is with you is greater than the governors. Who is with you is greater than everything and greater than everyone. Who is with you is the one who made the heavens and the earth, the one who parted the Red Sea for the people of Israel to pass on dry land. The one who brought down the walls of Jericho, the one who made the giant fall to the ground, the one who healed the sick, the one who died and rose again on the third day. It is this one who is with you. Therefore, take courage, rejoice, and rest your heart, because the one who is with you is stronger than evil, stronger than darkness, and stronger than wicked deeds.
The one who is with you is the Lord God Almighty. So do not be afraid. And Psalm 46, verse 7, tells us, The Lord of hosts is with us. Say it out loud, The Lord of hosts is with me. Is with us, and I will not fear. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In verse 8, Psalm 46 continues to say, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has brought on the earth. Here the psalmist extends an invitation in verse 8, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has brought on the earth. The psalmist is saying, Come and see, come and see how powerful God is. Come and see the works he has done. When the text speaks of the desolations he has brought on the earth, it means that God does great things. Notice that he did something tremendous in Egypt, bringing ten plagues upon them to liberate his people. See how God parted the sea for the people of Israel to pass through and closed it to prevent the Egyptians from following. So, what desolations has he brought on the earth? That is why the psalmist says, Come and behold, come and see how faithful God is in your life. How faithful God is in your home, how faithful God is to you. And in verse 9, he says even more, He makes wars cease. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth, He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two, He burns the chariots with fire. This verse 9 is very interesting because in verse 7, the psalmist says that the Lord is the Lord of hosts. However, in verse 9, he says that the Lord makes war cease. In other words, God is a God who is the Lord of hosts, but what is God's battle? God's battle is to cease wars. What does that mean? Ceasing wars means God is saying, I will cease the wars in your family. I will cease the wars in your workplace. I will cease the conflicts, the fights. I will bring peace among your family members. I will bring peace in your city, in your neighborhood. In other words, God is the God who is the Lord of hosts, but He comes to cease, to stop the wars, the struggles, the trials, and the afflictions of life. Very powerful. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. It is for him to cease wars to the end of the earth. What will he do? He will break the bow, cut the spear in two, and burn the chariots with fire. And in verse 10, the psalmist is filled with God and he says, Be still, and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in the earth. This verse 10 is very strong, very powerful. God is saying to me, to you, be still, calm down. Why so much anxiety, why so much hurry? Be still, be still in the Lord. Verse 10, Psalm 46 is saying, this calms your heart. Do not be anxious, do not rush. Rest in the Lord, be still in your soul. Be still, rest. Be still, God is saying in verse 10 of Psalm 46, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. Be still your soul, rest in the Lord, for He takes care of you. He watches over you. He works for you. He fights for you. He heals your soul, He transforms your life. He lifts you up with power. He is your refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. For this reason, be still. Know that God will be exalted on the earth and among the nations. And in verse 11, the psalmist concludes the psalm by saying, The Lord of hosts is with us. 
He reinforces what he said in verse 7, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Notice that in verse 7 and in verse 10, the psalmist makes the same declaration. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I was wondering with God, asking God why the psalmist repeated the same phrase twice in Psalm 46. In verse 7, he says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And in verse 11, in verse 11, I apologize, I said verse 10, in verse 11 the psalmist repeats the same phrase again. In verse 10, he says, Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted on the earth. And in verse 11, he repeats what he said in verse 7, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Why does he repeat it twice? God ministered to my heart. God spoke to me. Why does the psalmist repeat the same phrase twice? Do you know why? It's because many times we forget that the one who is with us is powerful. Have you noticed that in times of affliction, in moments of anguish? Sometimes we think that God is not listening to our prayer. That's how the disciples were in the boat when the storm was raging. They forgot that the Lord of hosts, the one who calms the sea and the wind, was there in the boat. The psalmist repeats the same phrase twice in verse 7 and again in verse 11 because he wants to strengthen, strengthen in our minds that the one who is with us is the Almighty God. And my sister and my brother, the one who is with you is not a weak God. The one who is with you is not a God who needs help. The one who is with you is not a God who walks with a crutch. The one who is with you is not a small God. The one who is with you is an almighty God. That's why the psalmist repeats in verse 7 and verse 11 that the one who is with us is the Lord of hosts. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And God, repeating, God only repeats what we need to hear when we need to hear it multiple times. That's why in Psalm 46, he repeats it twice in verse 7 and verse 11. He, the Lord of hosts, is with us. He is with us to give us victory. He is with us to heal, transform, lift up, strengthen, completely transform our lives. So do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord of hosts is in your life. Amen. Claim this word. Claim what God has promised for you. I want to invite you at this moment to pray with me. Let's pray to the Lord, asking for His divine providence, seeking healing salvation, and the blessings of Psalm 46 in our lives. Close your eyes and pray with me. Holy Spirit of God, we have meditated on each verse of Psalm 46. And we believe, O God, that you are the God of the impossible. You are the God who accomplishes the impossible in our lives. You are our refuge and strength a very present help in times of trouble. We will not fear even if the mountains crumble and everything around us shakes, for we are confident in you. We are rooted in the rock who is Christ Jesus. In this moment of prayer, I want to present the life of your servant who is listening to me, the life of your handmaid who is listening to me. Come and bless, come and strengthen, come and lift up, Come with your grace, come and give encouragement to her and to him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I ask you, God, to send your angel and may your angel undo every entanglement, remove every obstacle that is blocking the victory of your daughter and your son. Guard your people, Lord, 
for you are the Lord of hosts. We believe in your power. You are the Lord of hosts, and you are with us to protect, guard, defend, and guide us. Therefore, Lord, fight for us. Come and cease the wars to the ends of the earth. Put an end to the conflicts in households, the strife between couples, the conflicts at work, the conflicts in the church, and the conflicts in families. Let them all cease now, let them be annihilated. Let all evil, every negative force, every attack, and every counterattack from the enemy be undone by the power of Jesus' blood. Lord, cover our families, our homes with your blood. Defend us, protect us, guard us with your power and mercy. God, in the life of this woman listening to me and this man listening to me, pour out your blessings, your gifts, your virtue, and your victory. Shower us with blessings, grace, and victory over the lives of my sister and my brother, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask for the blessings of Psalm 46 in our lives, in our families, in our finances, and in our emotions. Lord God, bring healing, bring liberation, bring transformation, open doors, and grant victory. For you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In the name of Jesus, we take possession, Lord, of all the blessings, promises, and gifts that you have for our lives. In the name of Jesus, Amen and thanks be to God. Repeat this phrase with me, I take possession of all the blessings of Psalm 46 in my life. Repeat it again. God is my refuge and strength, a present help in difficult times. Say it louder, say it for hell to hear, for heaven to hear, for people to hear. Declare for everyone to hear, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In God, I can do all things because He strengthens me. Amen. Take hold of victory. Believe that you were born to overcome, and nothing and no one can steal from you the blessings of God that are in your life. Amen. May God bless you. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe and enable notifications. May God bless you. May the peace of the Lord and the prosperity of Christ be in your life. May the blessings of Psalm 46 be upon you. I greet all the winners with the holy peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Know that you are a winner in Christ Jesus and may God bless your life and your family. Today, we will pray Psalm 51, the Psalm of Forgiveness and Divine Mercy. Before we begin praying, I want to invite you to share this prayer with a friend or family member. It will surely be a blessing in their lives. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to receive more prayers and activate the notifications. When you subscribe to the channel, there is a small bell icon. Click on that bell to activate the notifications, so that whenever a new prayer is released, you will be notified. May God greatly bless your life. Today, we will pray Psalm 51, the Psalm of Forgiveness. Before we start reading, I need to tell you that this entire psalm has a backstory, a story behind it. Psalm 51 will deeply touch your heart. Stay until the end of this video because it will be a blessing for you. Amen. When David wrote this psalm, there was a story that preceded it. The Bible tells us that David was the king of Israel and the Bible says. And David became complacent because he had become king. He had achieved great conquests, great victories, and one day David was in his palace. When he looked beside him, he saw a woman named Bathsheba who was naked, and he desired her. 
he took the woman's husband and put him in the forefront of the war so that he would die, allowing him to be with the woman. It was a terrible sin that David committed, a sin that angered God, a great sin intentionally committed by David. He put the woman's husband in harm's way, ensuring his death, just so he could marry the woman. He committed a sin that was offensive to God, to the point where God raised the prophet Nathan and in the presence of David, prophesied so that David would repent of the sin he had committed. So David repents of this great sin, a sin that was considered a sin of death. It was at this point in David's life that he wrote Psalm 51. In verse 1 of Psalm 51, David says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only. Have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge? Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb, you taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let's pause at this verse 7 to explain something to you. Notice that in each verse of this psalm, David is humbling himself before God, asking for forgiveness of his sin. Now, there is a detail, God forgave David's sin, but the consequences of the sin came upon David and his household. God forgave him, yes, God forgives sin, but the consequences of sin will always come. If someone kills another person, it is a sin. A sin that God can forgive, but the consequences of that sin will occur. That person will be imprisoned. That person might even pay with their own life for taking someone else's life. A man who commits adultery betrays his spouse. God forgives, but the consequences of that sin will affect the lives of the adulterous man and woman. God is love, but he is also just. He forgave David, but the justice of God, the sword of God, did not depart from David's house. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, Jesus forgives us, but we must turn away from sin, distance ourselves from sin, flee from the appearance of evil. And David did not do that. He fell into sin, fell into temptation. And in this verse 7, he says, Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. What is hyssop? Hyssop is a plant that grew in Palestine, in Israel, and it was used to sprinkle the blood of the Lamb. In Exodus, when God commanded the blood of the Lamb to be placed on the doorposts, they used this plant to sprinkle the blood, the blood of a Lamb. And David is saying, Purify me with hyssop, meaning, pour the blood of the Lamb over me. The Lamb's blood that David is referring to is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Of course, the Bible speaks about it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. And Jesus took upon himself our sins and transgressions. When Jesus was crucified on the cross and his blood flowed, that blood of Jesus is what cleanses us from all sin. No matter the size of your sin, if you are repentant, if you are truly sorry, the blood of Jesus cleanses your sin. That is the word of Jesus to you, go and sin no more. There are various types of sins. In God's eyes, there is no such thing as a small sin or a big sin, but there are different types of sins, and each sin has its consequences. Lying is a sin. Being envious of someone is a sin. Wishing harm upon someone is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Murder is a sin. Adultery is a sin. 
There are also sins that are hidden. The Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is not one person who has not committed sin. And each one of us who has sinned receives punishment from God. But if we repent, we receive forgiveness from God, and the greatest sign of repentance in the life of a man or woman is when they stop sinning. Crying is not a sign of repentance for sin. If a person cries and says, I am sorry, that is not a sign of repentance. The greatest sign of repentance is when a person no longer commits the same sin. If they committed adultery, they no longer commit adultery. If they stole, they no longer steal. If they lied, they no longer lie. If they mistreated others, they no longer mistreat them. If they were envious, they are no longer envious. In other words, the greatest sign that we are repentant is when we do not repeat the same mistake and we ask for forgiveness for it. It is like David. He humbles himself and tears his heart apart in this Psalm 51 because he had committed multiple sins at once. He intentionally killed Bathsheba's husband and committed adultery with her. God was angry with David. And when he wrote this Psalm 51, David was consecrating himself, humbling himself in dust and ashes, seeking God's forgiveness and mercy. And in verse 8, he continues to say, Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me, O God. Look at this declaration in verse 10, David says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. David is asking God to create in him a pure heart because his heart was stained by sin. But he asks God to give him a pure heart, a heart purified from all iniquity and sin that dwelled within it. And in verse 11, he says, Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your holy spirit from me. This verse 11 is one of the most beautiful declarations of David in this Psalm 51. David was a king. He had a crown upon his head. David was a king. He had all the benefits of a king. He could have said, Lord, do not take away my kingdom from me. Do not take away my crown. Do not take away my riches, my possessions. But no. David knew that what mattered most in his life was the presence of the Holy Spirit, and everything he had achieved, he had achieved because the Holy Spirit was with him. So David implores, saying, Lord, do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. As if to say, Lord, you can take the crown, you can take the kingdom. You can take the throne, you can take the riches, but just do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Let your Holy Spirit remain within me. In verse 12, he says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors. Your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed. O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will greatly praise your righteousness. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifices, otherwise I would give them, you are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifice is pleasing. To God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. In these verses that I just read, verse 17, 16, David is saying that the sacrifices pleasing to God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart that God will not despise. In other words, it is not enough to climb the steps of a church on your knees. It is not enough to fast for 40 days. It is not enough to spend a lifetime on your knees in prayer. If our actions do not change, nothing will change. 
David is saying that the greatest sacrifice is a broken heart. What is a broken heart? It is a converted heart, a transformed heart. We cannot make sacrifices if our hearts are not transformed by the Holy Spirit. All we need is a broken heart, a heart softened by the presence of God, not a heart of stone, a hardened heart. We need a tender heart, a heart that melts in the presence of God, and all those who have a heart that melts in the presence of God, God hears their prayer. The Bible tells the story of a Pharisee and a tax collector. The Pharisee beat his chest and said, Lord, I sacrifice to you, Lord, I am faithful to you, Lord of my tithes. Lord, I do great things. This Pharisee exalted himself before God. Meanwhile, the tax collector couldn't even look up or towards the sky. He said, Lord, I am a sinner, I am a sinner, I am a great sinner. While the tax collector recognized that he was a sinner, the Pharisee thought he was too holy. And Jesus said that the tax collector, not the Pharisee, went home justified in the eyes of God. God wants us to come to him and acknowledge that we are sinners, in need of his mercy, in need of his forgiveness. There is no strength in ourselves. The only one who is strong is God. If we are strong, it is because God is within us. It is God who makes us strong. The strength I have, the strength you have, comes from God. Grace comes from God. Everything good that exists within us comes from God because all things are from Him, through Him, and for Him. And the psalmist David, he concludes Psalm 51 by saying, Build up the walls of Jerusalem according to your good pleasure. Then you will delight in righteous sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. David is not saying that sacrifices are unnecessary. It is necessary for us to sacrifice ourselves in prayer, in fasting. But above sacrifice, there must be our broken heart, our broken heart before God. So, when David wrote this Psalm 51, he had committed a great sin. But he was there asking for forgiveness, asking for mercy, asking God to pour his mercy upon his life. And God answered. God forgave David. However, God's justice was upon David, upon his family. And David paid a high price for his sin. And we don't have to go through God's punishment for our sin, but we need to have a broken heart. Even if you say, Brother, I have no sin. Even so, before God, we need to recognize that we are flawed and weak and in need of God's mercy. In the kingdom of God, there are no supermen or wonder women. We are all weak, and God's strength is within us. That's why we stand. The Bible says that Paul had a thorn in the flesh. A messenger of Satan came every day and slapped Paul in the face. Imagine that every day. And the Bible says that Paul prayed, asked God for mercy, and said, Lord, remove this thorn from my flesh, remove this situation. And God said to Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. For when you are weak, then you are truly strong. God doesn't need the strong because he is already strong. God needs the weak to show that he is strong. That's why God used the weak David to defeat the strong one called Goliath. God uses the small to confuse the great. God uses the poor to confuse the rich. God uses those who are not intelligent to confuse those who think they are intelligent. God uses the weak to confuse the strong. God chose you, even in your weakness. God chose you, even though you may say, Brother, my faith is weak, my strength is weak, and my energy is weak. Even so, God chose you, 
and it is in your weakness that the power of God is manifested. Let me ask you, who needs a doctor, the healthy or the sick? Who needs a doctor? The one who is already healed. Or the one who is sick? Who needs a doctor? It is the one who is sick, the one who is weak. It's the same with God. God will be by the side of the weak, not the one who thinks they are strong. Because the moment we feel strong with our own strength, that's when we are weak. But in the moment we feel weak, that's when God looks and says, It is in your weakness that I make you strong. It is in your weakness that I lift you up. It is in your weakness that you overcome challenges. It is in your weakness that you defeat giants. So, even if you feel weak, know this, the God who strengthens you is with you. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He didn't say, I strengthen myself with my own power. I am strengthened by the power of God. I am strengthened by the power of my Creator. It is God who makes you strong to overcome the challenges of life, to overcome life's problems, to overcome life's barriers. Receive spiritual strength at this moment to continue marching in the presence of God. You may be weak, but your God is strong. You may be small, but your God is great. You may not have strength, but your God has all the strength. You may not have wisdom, but your God is the very wisdom and guides your steps. You may not have riches, but your God is the owner of silver and gold, and He will prosper your life. You may be, perhaps, without direction, but your God is the compass, your God. Our God is the way, the truth, and the life that guides us to the eternal path. Take hold of this word, take hold of your victory. There are many people who no longer have the strength to pray, who no longer have the strength to go to church, who no longer have the strength to fast, who no longer have the strength to read the Bible. But the Lord is saying to you, I am making you strong in this moment, strong to overcome the difficult moments of life, strong to overcome problems and challenges. In your weakness, the Lord makes you strong in His presence. Amen. Take hold of this word in your heart. This is Psalm 51. The story is sad. David sinned, but he received forgiveness. The story has a happy ending. He received God's forgiveness, and God lifted David up again. If you fall, God is willing to lift you up if you repent deeply. The Bible says that the righteous may fall seven times, but they will not be utterly cast down, for the Lord will lift them up with power. If you have stumbled on your journey, shake off the dust, rise up, and continue walking in the presence of God. At this moment, I want to offer a special prayer for your life, so that God may forgive our sins, wash us with His mighty blood, and give us strength to stand in the presence of the Lord. Place your hand on your heart. I want to pray for you. If you have committed any sin, if you have done something that displeased the Lord, if you have done something that grieved the Holy Spirit's presence, or if you feel weak or directionless, I want to pray for you at this moment. Amen. Shall we pray? Sovereign Eternal God, our Father, we have just read Psalm 51. David sinned before you. He repented and received forgiveness and mercy from you. And here in your presence, we come to ask for your forgiveness, your mercy. Through the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. May you forgive all sin, wash us with your blood, purify us with your power in. The name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask, Lord. And may you forgive the sins of your people and give strength to your people, so. That your people may continue to walk firmly in your presence, providing strength to your people, guarding our ways, guarding our. 
paths, guarding our souls. Deliver us, Lord, from the temptations that surround us, deliver us from the temptations of sin that surround us and try to enchant us in some way. But the blood of Jesus has power, it rebukes the snares of the enemy. Every spirit of prostitution falls to the ground in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of divorce that seeks to destroy this marriage falls to the ground in the name of Jesus. Every evil spirit that tries to drag this woman and this man into the mire of sin, fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant strength to this man and this woman so that they may resist sin, so that they may resist temptation in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, give strength to this woman so that she does not fall into the sin of adultery with this man who flirts with her. May she not fall, Lord, into the devil's trap. May she not yield to the temptations of hell, but remain faithful to her spouse, to this man who is on the verge of adultery, to this man who is already trying to arrange a meeting with his mistress, in the name of Jesus, set this man free, Lord, do not let him fall into the sin of adultery, cut the bond of adultery, cut the bond of spiritual death. I present these marriages. I present their lives to you, Lord. Their lives are united in matrimony. Do not allow adultery to destroy this marriage. Do not allow, Lord, adultery to destroy this family. So, in the name of Jesus, cut this bond of adultery, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, grant strength to this man and this woman so that they may flee from sin. God, for the glory of your name, we ask for your protection. Guard us under your righteousness, bless our lives, forgive our sins. God, in the name of Jesus, forgive the sins of lying, gossip, envy, and deceit. Forgive all the sins that have passed through this heart. Come. And be cleansed now by the blood of the Lamb shed on the cross of Calvary. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your forgiveness, your mercy, and your deliverance. Deliver us from all temptations and guard our lives in the hiding place of your omnipresence. For all honor and glory be given to you from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and thanks be to God. As I prayed, God ministered to my heart to say to you. Married man, if you are facing temptation, if you are facing a problem, if a woman is trying to invade your life, do not allow a mistress in your life. Do not trade God's gift for a dish from the devil. You, who are married, you, married man, and you, married woman, do not trade God's gift, which is your husband, which is your wife, for a dish from the devil, which is a lover. Do not destroy your family, do not destroy your home, stay and remain with the woman God has given you. Stay and remain with the man God has given you. B. Faithful in your marriage, and the Lord will honor you, prosper you, and make everything right in your life. If you are going through a crisis in your marriage, embrace each other, forgive each other, reconcile, renew your vows, and move forward, but do not let the enemy trip you up. Do not fall into the sin of David, which was the sin of adultery, but remain faithful to God, to your husband, and to your wife, and God will grant you the honor of your faith, the honor of your faithfulness to God. God ministered to say this, so receive this word and remain steadfast with Jesus. Do not let the temptations pull you away. Do not let the temptations of the world lead you into sin, but stay strong with Jesus, stay firm with Christ, neither veering to the right nor to the left. Keep your gaze fixed on God, on Christ. Do not give your heart to sin. Stay faithful because our reward is in Him. A crown of glory awaits us in eternity. Our names are written in the book of life, and God has signed your name in this book. So remain steadfast in the presence of the Lord. 
The Bible says, To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my Father on his throne. Overcome sin, overcome the world, overcome darkness, overcome the devil, overcome temptation. Every temptation that comes against your life, overcome it, flee from sin, run from iniquity, distance yourself from the things of this world that draw you away from God. Draw near to everything that brings you closer to God, surround yourself with friendships that draw you closer to God. If you are single and will marry, marry someone who draws you closer to God. If you have a husband who is not yet a Christian, bring him closer to God. Help him to know God with love, grace, and tenderness. Can you win him over to Jesus? If your wife is not yet a Christian, slowly and lovingly lead her to Jesus with grace and patience. If your child is not a Christian, approach them with love, grace, and patience, and gradually bring them closer to Jesus until your whole family serves God. You will be able to say, as Joshua said, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Stand firm without sinning. Fight. Against sin, fight against the world, fight against temptation, and you will overcome by the power and strength of God. It's not by your own strength, not by your own intelligence, but by the wisdom of God. It's not by your knowledge, but by the knowledge of God you will be victorious. In the name of Jesus, you will prosper, you will conquer, you will overcome, you will rise up. In the name of Jesus, you will overcome temptation, you will reach the heavens. In the name of Jesus, you will crush the head of Satan, you will rebuke the enemy. And in the name of Jesus, you will receive healing. In the name of Jesus, you will be transformed and renewed. Receive victory, receive comfort, receive grace, receive encouragement. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Say Amen and thank God. I will be ending here, and may the prayer of Psalm 51 have been a blessing to your life. Today we will be reciting a powerful prayer from Psalm 70. I am certain that this prayer will strengthen your faith, fortify your hope and you will be strengthened in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Share this prayer with your friends and family. It will undoubtedly bless other lives. Feel free to leave your prayer requests in the comments. I am always reading and presenting all prayer requests before God. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to become part of this wonderful prayer family. We are here every day, praying and seeking the face of God. We will now read Psalm 70 and then pray to the Lord, calling upon the Almighty God. Psalm 70, written by David, says the following in verse 1, Make haste, O God, to deliver me, make haste to help me, O Lord. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confusion, let them turn back and be disgraced, those who desire my hurt. Let them be turned back because of their shame. Who say, Aha, Aha. May all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. However, I am afflicted and in need. Hurry for me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not delay. This Psalm 70 shows us. The distressed psalmist, David. He was probably going through a very, very difficult moment in his life. And who has never experienced such? A moment? A moment of anguish, sadness, affliction, to the point where you cry out, saying, God, hurry to deliver me. In verse 5. The psalmist is saying, However, I am afflicted and in need. Have you ever experienced such a moment, a moment of affliction where you feel helpless, alone, 
But I want you to know that the God who answered David's prayer is the same God we serve. And if your soul is like Psalm 70, anguished, sad, crying out, saying, God, hurry to help me, I come here as a prophet of God in your life to tell you that God will hurry to help you. God will hurry to grant you victory. God will hurry to place in your hands what you have been praying to Him for. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that even in this year, you will experience the best of God on earth. You will conquer everything you have asked for and dreamed of. Just persevere, insist, persist. Stay strong in your purpose because God is faithful to fulfill the promise. And in Psalm 70, the psalmist is saying, I am distressed. Hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it any longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word and telling you, hold on a little longer, wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus. The blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer, needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, God had already heard your prayer. But sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes, hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it. Any longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word, and telling you, hold on a little longer, wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will. Witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer, needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, God had already heard your prayer. 
but sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes. Satan cannot prevail. Wherever God places his hand, the enemy cannot prevail, and God is placing his hand upon your situation, upon what you have been praying for. Victory is guaranteed by the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. Hold on to your victory, hold on to your blessing. Do not give up, insist, persist. Stand firm in faith and prayer because God will grant you the blessing, will grant you the victory, and you will come back to this channel to share your testimony. Make this vow with God. Lord, if you deliver what I am asking for, I will return to Bruno Souza's channel and share my testimony of that word from Psalm 70, Hurry, God, and I will say. God hurried to hear my prayer, answered my plea, and granted me victory for the glory and praise of your holy name. The only thing we need to understand is that every victory is for the glorification of God's name. We have nothing for ourselves, everything is for God. Everything belongs to God, for from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. When God grants you the house you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the car you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the marriage you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. Of course, we do our part. Of course, we make efforts to conquer, but everything comes from God. It is God who exalts, God who humbles. It is God who impoverishes and God who enriches. It is God who kills and God who makes alive. Everything is under His command, everything belongs to Him. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. For from Him and through Him are all things. Everything is in the domain of Jehovah, and we serve this God. So take hold of this word. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life and believe with all your heart, O God who hurries to grant victory. And the God of Jacob, He is not just the God of the past. He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He is the God of Jacob, and He has taken charge of your life. And victory is yours. What has God signed in your life? What has God signed for your life? No eraser from hell can erase what God has written for you. Take hold of your blessing. Lift up your head, turn things around because you were born to conquer, and nothing and no one can take away the presence of God in your life, within your heart. And at this moment, I want to unite my faith with your faith. I want to unite my hope with your hope. I want to unite my certainty, my conviction with your conviction and certainty. I want to unite my prayer with your prayer, and together, in one unified cry, let us pray the prayer of Psalm 70. Amen. Let us pray, Sovereign God, Eternal Father, Creator of heaven and earth, in your holy and powerful, invincible and infallible presence, we stand. We are here to ask of you, we are here to thank you. We are here to pray, to seek your face. You are the one who lives and reigns forever. The psalmist was in a moment of anguish and sadness when he said to you, hurry, O God, to deliver me. And we want to make the psalmist's words our own. Hurry, O God, to help us. Look upon the tears of your daughter, look upon the tears of your servant who is listening to this prayer, and perhaps is crying and asking you for an answer, a provision that only you can give. Lord, you are the specialist in the impossible. Nothing in heaven, on earth, in the stars, 
or in the seas is impossible for you. You can do all things. You are the one who walked on water. You are the one who multiplied bread and fish. You are the Lord who healed the paralytic and made him walk again. You are the one who made the blind see. You are the one who raised the dead. You are the one who died and rose again on the third day. You are powerful. You are magnificent. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the Lamb of God, the Bright Morning Star. Lord, You are the Alpha and the Omega, the Beginning and the End. You are omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. You are present in all places, and nothing is hidden from You. You know and You search all things. You know the heart of Your servant, the heart of Your handmaid. You know our hearts. God, you. Interpret the tears of the faithful believer. And in this moment of prayer, we want to present ourselves before you. Just as the psalmist. David presented himself in Psalm 70. And he said, But I am poor and needy. Look, O God, upon the affliction, the need of your people. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask of you, we implore before you, we prostrate ourselves at your feet, recognizing your greatness. Recognizing that only you are faithful to fulfill, to accomplish the promises. You are not a man that you should lie, nor a son of man. That you should repent. Your word says that if your people, who are called by your name, will humble themselves, pray, seek your face. And turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And here we are, humbling ourselves, seeking, praying, repenting for all the mistakes we have made, and we ask you, O God, to do the impossible and the supernatural, to do what the doctors could not do. Do what the lawyers, judges, and prosecutors could not do. Open the way for every cause in the justice system, Remove the obstacles, and grant victory to your servant. And to this afflicted mother who has been praying for her child's deliverance from drugs, alcohol, and addiction, set free, Lord, this woman's child and grant victory in the name of Jesus. Lord, to this afflicted and needy mother who prays for her children, who prays without God for her children, grant this gift, this blessing to your servant in the name of Jesus. Rescue, O oh God, this young woman, this young man from the addiction of alcohol and drugs, and make her a missionary in your presence, make him a preacher of the gospel. God, in the name of Jesus, I present this couple who are in crisis, this couple who is on the verge of divorce. God, in the name of Jesus, reach out with your outstretched hand, enter with your power and restore this marriage. Restore this family that is in crisis and grant victory to God for the glory and praise of your name. We cry out to a God who is faithful, who is mighty, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in the universe. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to perform the miracle, Lord, for this woman and this man who are seeking a job opportunity. Open the door of employment. Lord, bless the financial life of your daughter and son so that they can come back here in prayer and share the testimony that the door of employment has been opened for the glory of God. Open the door of employment in the lives of your daughter and son. Bless the material aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus, especially. Bless our spiritual lives, make us more intimate with you, make us Lord, more and more of your friends. Each day, Make us more and more excellent worshipers. God, may we seek your face every day not out of pain, but out of love. It is love that we want to seek your presence. God, we trust in your power and we place you above all else, above everyone. You are in first place in our hearts. God, in the name of Jesus. We don't want to serve you just for what you can give us, 
but we want to serve you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. God, in the name of Jesus, bring your peace, bring your blessing, your love, your favor. May the blessings of Psalm 70 manifest in the lives of this woman and this man who is listening to me. I present before you, O oh God, all the prayer requests that have been placed in the comments of this video. Enter with your blessing, enter with your provision, enter with your answer, and grant victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask. You, in the name of Jesus. We cry out to you in the name of Jesus, we implore you before you, Lord, exalt the humble, bring down the one. Who exalts himself, grant victory to your people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask you in the name of Jesus. Come and heal the illnesses, whatever type of illness is in the bodies of your sons and daughters, let every illness disappear now in the name of Jesus. Disappear, for the word of God tells us in Isaiah 53 that the Lord has borne our sicknesses. The punishment that brought us peace was upon you, and by your wounds, we are healed, restored, transformed. So send your healing, send your favor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hurry, O God, we are asking you as servants. We are imploring you as humble servants in your presence. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing, without you, we will achieve nothing. But with you, Lord, we can do all things, with you, O God, we can overcome the challenges of life. We acknowledge that, without you, we are powerless, for you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Therefore, O God, I present the requests of your sons and daughters and grant a special victory, an exclusive blessing, a blessing from your throne in the lives of each brother, each sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of Psalm 70 be upon our lives, and may you, Lord, hasten by your mercy to grant us victory in every area of our lives, so that our testimony may be told and your name glorified in our testimony of victory and blessing. In the name of Jesus, we ask and thank you in advance for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen and thanks be to God, and may God bless your life. Take hold of this word, take hold of this prayer. Believe that the God of David, the God who hastens to help us, is with you, and with God, we are the majority, with God, we will break down walls, and with God, we will overcome giants. With God in our lives, we will overcome the storms. With God, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God of love and mercy. May God bless you greatly, you and your entire family. A big hug, and may the peace of the Lord Jesus be in your heart. And remember, you were born to conquer and experience all the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life. The peace of the Lord Jesus, and may God bless us more and more. Today, we are going to pray with all our faith, asking God to break every chain through the power of Psalm 91. Before we begin praying, it is very important that you type your prayer request in the comments. Let's pray for every bondage, everything that is trying to hinder your victory, to be broken. Every evil, in the name of Jesus, will be defeated. We will read Psalm 91 and together, with all our faith, we will pray to the Almighty Lord. In this prayer, I am certain that the Lord will deliver victory, blessings, and rewards. Let us pray together. With all our faith. It is also important that you share this prayer with seven friends, whether on Facebook, Instagram, or in your WhatsApp. Contacts and groups. Share this prayer with seven or more friends so that they may be blessed through this prayer. For when we bless. 
someone's life, we are also blessed. So, bless the lives of your friends. Share this prayer with them. Let us read Psalm 91 with all our faith and then pray to the Lord. Amen. And Psalm 91 says the following, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but you shall not be harmed, only with your eyes you will witness the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my refuge, the Most High, and your dwelling place. No harm shall befall you, no plague shall come near your home. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon lions and cobras, you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, I will deliver him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God for this powerful word. This is Psalm 91, and the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life. Type the following phrase in the comments, the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life at this moment. Place your hand on your heart and repeat this phrase with all your faith. The blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life. Place your hand on your head and repeat this phrase with all your faith. The blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life. Stretch your hands high and repeat with me, the blessings of Psalm 91 are in my home, in my family, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Claim this word. Claim your victory and in this moment, with all our faith, let us pray together to the Lord and claim all the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. Therefore, in this moment, with all our faith, let us pray to the Sovereign God. And Eternal Father, Creator of the heavens and the earth. In your holy and blessed presence, here we are. We are here in this moment of prayer, praying Psalm 91 with all our faith. God, I want to present to you every prayer request that has been typed in the comments of this video. Lord, may the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon the life of each person who requested prayer, help, and provision. May you send your angel to sever the ties, undo the entanglements, and break every bondage in their emotional life, financial life, spiritual life, and health. May all chains and constraints be shattered now in the name of Jesus Christ. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be confirmed in our lives, in our homes, in our families. God, in the name of Jesus, shelter us under the shadow of your wings. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon us. I lift up the financial life of everyone listening to me right now. May every bondage, every hindrance blocking financial blessings be broken, every evil be broken, every chain be broken, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask for your blessing upon the financial life of everyone listening to me at this hour. Prosper them, grant them victory, open doors of employment. Open the doors of employment. Lord, in the lives of your people, in the name of Jesus, for those who are unemployed. May the door of employment open, and may your name be glorified. For those who are in debt, 
may all their debts be paid in the name of Jesus. Open doors, prosper your sons and daughters, so that they may pay off their debts. I present those who have a business, may the Lord prosper them. For those seeking their first job, may the Lord open this door. For those who are studying, may the Lord bless their minds, may the Lord illuminate their minds. And may they prosper in their studies. God, may the blessings of Psalm 90 be upon the financial lives of everyone listening to me at this hour. Prosper them from the north, south, east, and west. Bring forth prosperity. Showers of blessings. Showers of victory. Showers of power upon the lives of everyone listening to me at this moment. God, I present to you every prayer request that has been typed in the comments of this video. No matter how simple the prayer request may be, I ask you, Lord, to perform miracles, to do the unprecedented, to accomplish the impossible, and grant victory to your servants, to your handmaidens, for the glory of your name. We ask you, Holy Spirit of Truth, Holy Spirit of God, I present to you, Lord. Every prayer request. Bring healing to those who are going through a period of illness, of disease. May every disease in the name of Jesus disappear now, may every lump disappear, may all pain in the body disappear, may all leg and arm pain vanish in the name of Jesus, may every digestive system ailment disappear now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May every sickness vanish in this moment and never return. Bring healing, bring restoration. Bless the health of your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask you. I also present to you, Lord. The romantic lives of those who are single, those who are dating, those who are engaged and married. May every bondage, every hindrance that tries to block, that tries to tie down the romantic victory of your people be broken. May every evil be rebuked. Bless. The romantic lives of each one, Bless for the glory and praise of your name those who are single and seeking marriage. May the Lord bless their romantic lives. May the Lord bless in a powerful way. May the romantic lives of each one listening to me be abundantly blessed, even in this year, in the name of Jesus. For marriages in crisis, marriages facing trials, may the Lord bring restoration to those marriages. May the Lord bless families. God, in the name of Jesus, may all evil crumble and may your name be glorified. Bless families. Lord, may the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon the romantic lives of your people. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon their finances, their health, and every area of their lives. May the Lord bless in a powerful way. Open the pathways. Open the doors, Lord, and grant victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask because we believe in the power of your name. Your word says that whatever we ask in your name, believing, we shall receive. And in the name of Jesus, may the blessings of Psalm 91 be confirmed upon the lives of your people, and may your name be glorified in the victory of each one of us, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask that every bondage be broken, that every chain be broken, in the name of Jesus Christ. May everything that tries to interrupt, everything that tries to paralyze the victory of each one of us, everything that tries to block, be rebuked in the name of Jesus. May the walls crumble, may the giants fall in the name of Jesus Christ, we take possession, Lord, of the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives, in our homes, in our families, for your word reveals to us that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, my fortress, and in Him, I will trust, for He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. 
he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my refuge, the Most High, and your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague. Come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They will hold you up with their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on. High because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him, and show him my salvation. May these blessings of Psalm 91 be upon our lives, upon our families, upon our homes, and upon our paths may our paths be opened, may the closed doors be opened, and may your name, the Eternal God, be glorified in our victory. May the Lord bless your people in every area of their lives with peace, blessing, victory, and prosperity. In the name of Jesus, we pray with all our faith, and we thank you in advance, because you, Lord, are the power, the glory, the strength, and the dominion forever and ever. Cover us, Lord, under the shadow of your wings. Guard our lives, protect our lives and our families. May your resplendent cloud of glory be upon us. May your sacred mantle be upon us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, Amen. And thanks be to God, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Take possession of this word, take possession of this prayer. I invite you to subscribe to the channel. We are here every day, praying to the Lord. May God bless your life in a very special way, to each subscriber of this channel. Thank you very much, because together we are a prayer family, and our united prayers have great power. A big hug to your heart, and may the peace of the Lord reign over all of us. And remember, you were born to conquer, and the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life. May God bless our lives in a very special way. The peace of the Lord Jesus, may God bless you. Today we are going to pray the prayer, Psalm 18, and it will be a blessing in your life and in your family. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to receive prayers and messages of faith. For those of you who are already subscribed, please share this video with others, a friend, a family member, so that they too may be blessed by this prayer. May God bless you in a special way. If you wish, make your prayer request, and we will present it before God. Amen. We will be reading Psalm 18, providing some explanations of this psalm and we will also be praying based on Psalm 18. Psalm 18 says the following, a Psalm of David. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In these verses, we can see this beautiful declaration of love from the psalmist David to God. He declares that the Lord is his shield, strength, and refuge in his life. We can apply this to our own lives and understand that God is your shield, strength, and refuge. 
In verse 3, the psalmist says further, I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surrounded me, and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came before his ears. In these verses, we can see the psalmist declaring that snares of death and traps were set against his life. However, the Lord delivered him because he called upon the Lord in times of distress. This often happens in our lives as well. But God is faithful to break the snare and grant us victory because He is our shield, the one who gives us strength to overcome. And in the following verse, verse 7, it tells us even more. Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations of the mountains also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Here the psalmist is speaking about the wrath of God, his indignation, and the earth shook with the fury of the Lord. And in the following verse, verse 8, it depicts God's response to the enemies of David. Here the psalmist declares in verse 8 the stance of God in the face of wickedness, in the face of injustice. It says, Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon a cherub, and flew, he soared upon the wings of the wind. Here the psalmist is showing that God was indignant with the things done against him. That is why the Lord he has this posture of justice towards all those who rise against the anointed of the Lord. And you are anointed by God, you are anointed of the Lord, and whoever touches you touches God. Whoever touches you touches your Creator, who is the Lord of hosts. That is why the Bible says that we are the bride of Jesus. Whoever touches the bride touches the groom. That is why the Bible says that the Lord is our Father, and whoever touches the Son or the Daughter touches the Father. So whoever touches you touches God. That is why the Lord is your shield, our shield. And in verse 11, the psalmist says even more, He made darkness his secret place, his canopy around him was dark. Waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, the foundations of the world were uncovered at your rebuke, O Lord at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. In these verses we just read, we can see a God of justice acting in favor of those who serve him, to the point that the psalmist says that the Lord drew him out of many waters. These many waters that the psalmist is referring to are the struggles and adversities he was facing. And if you are going through any struggle, any persecution, know that the Lord will draw you out of the many waters. In other words, He will save you with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That is why in verse 17, the psalmist says, He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place, He delivered me because He delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in His sight. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all His judgments were before me, and I did not put away His statutes from me. I was also blameless before Him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. 
Therefore the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful you will show yourself merciful, with a blameless man you will show yourself blameless. In these verses, the psalmist is showing how just our God is, how mighty our God is, how majestic our God is. Here, he is demonstrating the goodness of the Father towards him, and he is declaring how powerful God was in his life. And in verse 26, he continues by saying, With the pure you will show yourself pure, and with the devious you will show yourself shrewd. Here, in verse 20 and 26, it speaks of how with the merciful, God will show mercy, and with the sincere man, God will show sincerity. With the pure, God will show purity, and with the wicked, God will show cunningness. Here, the psalmist is referring to God as a just God, a God of justice. God will do good to those who do good, and God will bring harm to those who do evil. And in verse 27, he says further, For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. You are my lamp, O Lord, my God, shine forth in my darkness. In this verse, the psalmist is saying that God will bring light into his darkness. And perhaps you may find yourself in a similar situation, going through a moment of darkness, a gloomy time. But God is saying, I will bring light to your darkness, and I will bring clarity to your life. The light of the Lord will reach your house, your life, and you will glorify the name of the one who lives and reigns forever. This psalm further reveals in verse 29, For by you I can run against a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. The way of God is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. It is a shield for all who trust in Him. 4. Who is God, except the Lord? And who is a rock, except our God? God is the one who strengthens me and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. He trains my hands for battle so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. We need to understand that the author of this psalm is David, and that is why he uses this language of war as if he were going into a fight, a war, a battle. This same David was the one who defeated the Philistine army, the same one who defeated the giant Goliath. You know the story very well, and here the psalmist David is declaring that it is God who gives him strength, who surrounds him with strength. And God is doing the same thing in your life, my sister and my brother. God is giving you strength to overcome, empowering your arms to break iron bows, bronze bows. The Lord is giving you strength to rise above difficulties, to surpass afflictions and distress. Receive strength from God. And Psalm 18 says even more in verse 35, You have given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand upholds me, and your gentleness makes me great. You enlarge my steps under me, and my ankles do not give way. I pursued my enemies and overtook them, I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise, they fell beneath my feet. Here the psalmist is still using the language of war. When he went into battle, the Lord granted him strength, and he defeated his enemies. Bringing it to the present day, it is no different. We have spiritual enemies, forces of evil that fight against us 24-7. But God, the God of David, the God who manifested himself in David through this Psalm 18 that we are reading, he will give you strength to overcome your enemies, to break through barriers, to conquer difficulties, and to defeat your enemies. And he makes a very important declaration in verse 39. He says, For you equipped me with strength for the battle, you made those who rise against me sink under me. And in verse 38, he speaks of how his enemies fell beneath his feet. 
So, in these verses 38 and 39, we can see that David's enemies had fallen at his feet, and even Jesus himself said that the Lord grants us power to tread on the forces of evil. Hey! My sister and my brother who are listening to me right now, at this moment, God is giving you strength to overcome evil, to tread on serpents and scorpions, and all the power of the evil one. Receive spiritual strength right now to conquer the darkness, to overcome the evil that may surround you. And in the following verses, it says more, You made my enemies turn their backs in flight, and I destroyed those who hated me. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them, to the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine. As wind-blown dust, I trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people, you have made me the head of nations. People I did not know now serve me, foreigners cower before me, as soon as they hear of me, they obey me. They all lose heart, they come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes, from a violent man you rescued me. Therefore, I will praise you, Lord, among the nations, I will sing the praises of your name. This is the last verse of Psalm 18. The psalmist declares, He gives his king great victories, he shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. In this Psalm 18, the psalmist is using language of battles. That's why he talks about pursuing and defeating the enemy. But we know very well that our true enemies are not the people who speak ill of us, who envy us, who gossip about our lives. Our true enemies are the forces of evil, the malevolent spirits that fight against our lives. And this Psalm 18 is a psalm of war, a psalm of battle. Just as God anointed, strengthened, and empowered the psalmist to win the fights and wars, he will do the same in my life and in your life. God will give you spiritual capacity to overcome the spiritual battles you may be facing. Just as God empowered the psalmist in Psalm 18, God will also empower you to break down walls and conquer the forces of evil. And right now, I want to pray for blessings. May the blessings in Psalm 18 come down upon your life, your home, and your family. Close your eyes as I pray for you in this moment. Let's pray, Holy Spirit of Truth. We have just read Psalm 18, and we believe that you are the one who equips our hands, who trains our arms, so that we can break bronze. Bows. You are the one who enables us to leap over walls. You are the one who grants us strength. Just as the Lord anointed, equipped, and strengthened the psalmist David in Psalm 18, I ask you. In the lives of my sister and my brother who is listening to me, strengthen, equip, and grant victory. May the blessings of Psalm 18 be upon their home, their family, and the life of your daughter who is listening, your son who is hearing in the name of Jesus. May your Holy Spirit come and do the supernatural. Do what the doctor cannot do, do what the lawyer cannot do, do what the psychologist cannot do. Go, Lord, go there, Father, and perform the supernatural, the miracle in the lives of your sons and daughters, in the name of Jesus Christ. Repeat these words with me, I take hold of all the blessings of Psalm 18. I take hold of my victory. The Lord is my strength, and in Him I will trust. He gives me strength to leap over walls. He gives me strength to overcome my enemies. He gives me strength to surpass my limits for the glory of God and the blessings of Psalm 18. May they be upon your life, your home, your family, and may the Holy Spirit of God strengthen and enlighten you, 
guiding your steps to make the right decisions and to overcome and defeat the enemies that come your way. Receive strength from the Father and the Holy Spirit to overcome, courage and encouragement to surpass your limits. I'll end here.